Look at this. It's Tune In Tuesday. I don't even have to sing it. Tuesday, it doesn't tell me. I love this song. I sang it to people. Tuesdays for Tune In. Tune In on Tuesday. Everybody tune in. And it's Tune In Tuesday. And it just keeps, it just keeps going. going. Tuesdays for Tune In. Thank you, Abby. Everybody tuning Thank in. Thank you. Everybody tuning in. It is Everybody so good. Everybody tuning in. It makes me so happy. I've sang it. I've played it. It becomes this earworm. I forget the words. <laughs> and then I have to learn them again. And really, there's only like five words. <laughs> really? Yeah. How hard can it be? How hard can it be? Tune in Tuesday. Tuesdays for tuning. Everybody tuning in. It's no, pretty much it. No, there's I mean, four lines. But yeah. But what's the... See, it's that... It's the fourth or third... Tune in Tuesday. Tuesdays, Tuesdays for tuning. tuning everybody. No, see? <laughs> this is the problem we have. And and he wrote it. Wrote I, it. Well, I don't, wouldn't say I wrote it. I'd say it was that inspired. it just... It came out. <laughs> it did come out. So, good morning, everyone. It is Tune in Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday, December 21st. It's the shortest day of the year. Yes. And normally I would head to Wasaga Beach on the longest day of the year. I do not think I will be heading to Wasaga Beach on the shortest day of the year. No. It might involve some Christmas wrapping and conversations, staff meeting. Staff meeting? Staff meeting. And coffee. Yes. Coffee. Coffee. Um, so, but today is Tune In Tuesday. And so that's where we reflect back on Sunday's service and what we talked about. And so we'll give them a, a few minutes. Yeah. And so in the meantime, in the meantime, we, um, yeah, we have staff meeting today and then we're heading into Christmas. It's a true story. Yes. And so next week, next week we have special guests every single day. So please make sure you continue to tune in at whatever is most convenient to you <laughs> uh, because we realize that lots of people are on holidays. That's right. So there is no expectation to get up at seven. But we do encourage you to, to continue to be encouraged to w watch and share and like and, uh, and even send it as a gift to someone mm -hmm. who you think, oh, that might be a really good um, encouragement to someone. Maybe that, that would be helpful to them. So, yeah, uh, yeah that, so that's next week. I have one, two, three guests so far that have never been on Morning Devos. Never before. I know who one is. Because, I, yeah. I just, Mutual I friend. Yes. So back to Sunday. We're, we're still waiting for you, <laughs> by the way, to tell us what we talked about, what I talked about. What you about. talked about. Um, yeah. Now, while people are typing whatever they're typing, do you have a story about your sweater, or is it just? It's. Just, I feel like just woke up I and said, need. I'm an elf today. Yes, I. I go to enough ugly Christmas <laughs> sweater things that I just needed to purchase an ugly Christmas sweater. So this is it, and so I haven't had a chance to pull it out yet this uh, this year. So today's, this is the legit one. Okay. Last week you accused I mean, my Ottawa Senators I being mean. my ugly Christmas sweater. But this is the, the legit one. This is my little <laughs> elf costume. Sometimes we don't mean for things to be the things that they are and they just are. So <laughs> So crazy. Yeah. Did you see, speaking of ugly Christmas sweater, did you see Galen's yes. get up on Friday night? That, there was no competition. Like there were other ugly Christmas sweaters at the party uh, and they were good. There were some some that would have won prizes until Galen walked in. And it was it was something. If you're not sure what we're talking about, you can check out the BFMC yeah. Youth Instagram page. Yeah. And you'll see photos of Galen Hamilton yeah. and her ugly Christmas sweater and her hair was done up uh, into a Christmas tree. She kind of looked like a who from Whoville. Yeah, yeah. Yes, like totally hooed out. Uh, Karen, Gold Star, Joy. Gold Star Joy. I know. So Karen, Karen Sutton got it. She said we talked about yes. Joy. Yes. So I said you get the Gold Star this morning. <laughs> <laughs> she might be the only one, and she doesn't even drink coffee. That's and both it. of her yeah. eyes are awake. Yes. So we did. We talked about Joy and just uh, Christmas Carol. That probably continues to stand out to me. Mm -hmm. 
is just the exuberant joy that he had. Yeah. And I'm like, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. I want... I'm tired of the negative self-talk and I'm tired of, of the gloominess and the despair. And it's mm -hmm. like, if, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Mm -hmm. The old is gone and the new has come. Yeah. And so it's like, that's what I want. And it takes work. That's all I have to say. It takes work. Yeah. And, um, and you might think, well, we're, we're believers in Christ. Why should it take work? You know, if the old is gone, the new has come. Why should it take work? Um, and I have to be reminded every day that we, you know, we have an enemy, yeah. right? And that enemy is trying to come and steal and kill and destroy. And he has this way of, of sneaking in. And I'm like, it is a battle. Yeah. And, and we um, were reminded in scripture too that we carry around with us that old nature that mm -hmm. which which want haunts us like it wants yeah. to wants to continue to pull us into uh, all that we were before yeah. our life in Christ and um, and that's why that's where the work is the work it's interesting because the there's no work in resting in Jesus but it mm -hmm. is work to us to um, to remember to rest in him and to even to set set things up in our lives that um, allow us to enter into yeah. that rest and to experience the fullness of joy that is found in, in Jesus. Right. And, and that's, you know, you had talked uh, about right. that on, on Sunday as well. And uh, just Jesus says, the, and that's it, right? The old nature uh, is rooted in the enemy and the enemy comes to seek mm -hmm. and to kill and destroy. Mm -hmm. uh, but Jesus comes that we may have life and have it to the fullest. And, and right. that requires us asking am I experiencing life to the fullest right right and as Elizabeth has put in is how will I be known for my joy mm -hmm. how will I step into how I am radically changed by Jesus and and the verse that just came to mind is that we have to take captive yeah right and that means we actually have to exert we have to exert energy we're to take captive every thought right the good the bad and the ugly um, but what's interesting is sometimes you actually have to catch them like, yeah. you know, when I'm thinking of catching a mouse or, or you have to actually set a trap for them, right? There's yeah. some exertion on us that we have to like catch it. Are you going to hit a, a, a fly? Yeah. You actually have to get out a fly swatter and, and try to kill it. Yeah. Um, but that's what he wants us to do is to take captive every thought, yeah. to exert energy, to actually desire to get rid of those thoughts so we can make room. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so now you shared with me that one of the things that stood out to you was the fact, well, I'll let you say. Yeah. So first of all, when you uh, kind of entitled the sermon, A New Day, I immediately thought, oh, it would have been so good if it was called A New Hope, Star Wars, and I just Star I love the Star Wars, Wars reference. Um, but A New Day is filled with A New Hope, and, and Scrooge found himself um, filled with that, that new hope. But before that, um, he was, he was broken by hurt. Uh, he was wrapped up in self-preservation and he was destined to die alone. And I, and I just, as you shared that, I was reminded that that's who we are mm. apart from Christ and his work uh, yeah. in us. And, and, um, and so if, mm. you know, if, if you don't know Jesus, um, it's a difficult truth to hear and yeah. and we don't like hearing that kind of wording um and scrooge didn't like hearing those things about himself no. or, or coming to those realizations um but it's it's the truth that apart from christ that's who we are and that's where yeah. um our life is is headed and so but the joy is found in the fact that we are yeah. made a new creation and i just love the the transformation that we see in, in the movie and the story mm -hmm. uh, in Scrooge's life is the transformation that we experience as well. And I think sometimes as Christians, we forget um, the initial joy yes. of salvation. And, and I think you even mentioned David saying, like, restore unto mm -hmm. me the joy of my salvation. And, and, and maybe there's something in that too, that, like, David says those words when he is reminded of that old self that the work right. that it is to continue to submit to Jesus because he's failed in that regard and and there's this 
the creeping up of the old self comes in and he says, God, restore to me the joy of my salvation. And how many times do I need to be reminded or, or to pray that prayer, Lord, restore to me the joy of my salvation? Yeah. Because I get we get into routine, we get into the drudgery that is life sometimes. Yes. Uh, yes. And, and that's not what life in Christ is meant to be. It's meant to be um, full of joy and full of yeah. rejoicing. And you mentioned the first Thessalonians passage, rejoice always, Yes. pray without ceasing, and in all things give thanks, for this is God's will for you. People, right. we, like, we so, oftentimes we get caught up in, what is God's will for my life? And we're thinking about oh, like good. the specific thing that yeah. God has called us to but God's will yes. is that we would rejoice mm. always. Yeah, I was just so for you Bible people out there who like to go deeper, um, that's very specific. So this is God's will. There's also another passage in Romans that says so that you can know God's will and in Philippians. So you guys, you know, in your time off today, just do a search on how you can what the Bible says about knowing God's will. Yeah. So that's some homework. Yeah. Um, but what came to mind as you were sharing that was just this idea like on Sunday I said we have to like remember every day who Jesus is mm -hmm. like that's step number one and I even did that this morning as I was walking around and it was cold and it was dark and it was like okay God is almighty God is all-powerful God is here he's gonna look after things and it was like it was like right taking every cap every thought captive yeah. transforming my mind and just needing to grasp on to who God is. Because we said that, we've said that actually for the last few weeks. Yeah. Is how important it is to remember who God is and to know the character of God. So I'm just going to put in a little plug here. Um, we do a, a weekly verse just to meditate on. And if that's something that you want to be a part of, we invite you to join us. So you'll have to just message me, Janet BFMC, or on Facebook. And so this year, so this year we spent uh, every week getting to know God through a passage of scripture. And next year coming, we're going to look at our identity in Christ and, and who God says we were, because that's the next part. Right. And it seems like everywhere I, everywhere I look, everything I read, um, that is what we are struggling with as believers, mm. as followers of Christ. We actually don't know what our identity is. Yeah. Who are we in Christ? Yeah. And what does that mean? Yeah, because... Knowing who God is, uh, is the first for sure. Um, but if we just stop there, then um, we are left hopeless. Because yes. because God is so holy and so perfect that we everything we do pales in comparison and, and we fall short in everything. And so we're left with falling short. And, yeah. and nobody wants to be there. <laughs> we don't want to be left there. And so it's so important to know then that he says mm -hmm. that... What what he says about us, and I have made you a new creation. You are a child of God. You've been uh, redeemed. You've been yes. placed in the heavenlies. Like all of these important things that, that we need to know that give us the hope to step into the, the new day mm -hmm. with, with joy. Uh, and then the result of that was the third thing, which is to rejoice and to give thanks. To give yes. thanks for all that he's done. Um, yes. in our lives and all that he's called us to as well. Yeah, because that's what transforms us, right? When we start being thankful for things, we are transformed. And it really starts with even the smallest thing from, you know, a cup of coffee and a conversation. I'm for the cup of coffee. <laughs> and the fact that Carmel the cat came downstairs to <laughs> greet us. Actually, she followed Michelle She's going to jump up and... Rub against the tripod thing, and oh no, there she is. She's yeah, but last week I called her. I'm like, come here, <laughs> and she came, and I was like, oh. But there's, you know, there's so many things that we we can be thankful for, and just even if you're struggling with that, Lord, would you? I want to say, help me to be thankful. Take off like the thankful lid, mm -hmm. right? Whatever it is that's stopping me from being thankful, and would you just? Show me, reveal to me how to teach yeah. me how to be thankful. And and when we ask Jesus to teach us, like he teaches us. And mm -hmm. whatever it is, you might think, ask Jesus to teach me to be thankful. Yeah. Which yeah. sounds really strange. Yeah. But but the fact is it says 
teach me your ways, O Lord, right? So his ways is that we would be thankful. Mm -hmm. And so if he's asking us to be thankful, but we're struggling to be thankful, it makes sense that we, if we ask him, he'll help. Yeah. I'm reminded when I think of thankfulness, I'm reminded of a story that I heard many, many years ago. I was uh, listening to uh, Tony Campolo and he was sharing about, um, you know, he lived and worked and, you know, made his uh, way around Philadelphia and Camden, New Jersey. And, and, um, and one day he was walking um, in Philadelphia and um, there was a, a homeless guy and the, he walked straight to Tony and Tony's thinking to himself, oh man, I gotta tell this guy I don't have money or whatever, like, or do I have change or whatever. He's right. just, he's processing everything before the guy comes to him and the guy came up to him with uh, a brown paper cup and, and he walked up to Tony and he said, I want you to try this. I want you to have some of this coffee. And Tony was like, oh no, what do I do here? And he's like, I'm, I have to have some, okay. So, and then, so he, he takes, reluctantly takes, like, and this is way before COVID. Um, <laughs> he reluctantly takes you're a sharing, sip. sharing, you're sharing. <laughs> reluctantly takes a sip of the coffee. And he says, mm, thank you. And, and the guy, the homeless guy says to him, the coffee was just so good today that I wanted to share that with somebody. And, and so like just that thankfulness that he had for this cup of probably shelter coffee, um, which is known to not be all that good, um, a step above maybe hockey arena coffee, <laughs> um, but he, he enjoyed the coffee so much. He was so thankful for the coffee that he wanted to share that with, with Tony and, and with anyone that would actually mm -hmm. listen to him or pay attention. And, and that's the thankfulness that we're called into yeah. in Christ is to be so thankful for all that he's done that we would just share it, that yeah. we would share it with, with everyone who would listen and even some who wouldn't. <laughs> yes. And so we are called to be people of joy. We are called to be people of joy. And if we're struggling with joy and I'm going to, I'm, I'm in that boat. Um, the three things are remember who God is, remember who God says you are, and then cultivate thankfulness and when we do those things, then it will lead to the joy that God has mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. Would you pray for us this morning? Absolutely. Father, thank you. And really, that is the sum of our prayer this morning, Lord. Thank you. And if that's not where our heart is, we pray that you would change that, that you would uh, well up within us thankfulness for who you are, who you say that we are, and that our, the result would be a rejoicing and, and sharing that thanks uh, with others around us, Lord, that we would let our light shine mm -hmm. so that others would see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Lord, would you make us people who are known and marked by our thankfulness uh, and joy for the life that you give us. We pray these things through Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, our dear friends. That's it. That's all. Remember to like and... Share. And go outside on this short day. On this very short day. Make sure you get some vitamin D. And would you be joyful to those around you helping your community experience Christ. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye.